stand back, make room, Moose. Gosh, must be a big celebrity coming. Since the credit crunch, he's the biggest celebrity in Chicago's car business. But here he comes now. Stand back from his jet blast. I'm only one answer to the high cost of living. If you need a car today, you probably need credit, too. At Benz, you get them both. You sure are a popular fellow. Just doing my job, giving the credit Ben's customers deserve. Welcome to Chicago Wrestling, presenting Hall of Fame Classics and Chicago Boxing, highlighting today's top personalities. Beep, beep. Hi, big guy. I'm a used car trying to break into TV. Have your owner drive you over to Ben's Auto Sales. Beep, beep. Why Ben's? Ben's buys cars now. If you're lucky, he'll buy you and put you on TV. Beep, beep. That's all there is to it? You look in top shape, so I think Ben's will buy you. Beep, beep. I'm so happy. Me, a TV used car star, like those other biggies on Ben's car lot. That's what dreams are made of, Bobby. Oh. Okay, fans, we're here in Chicago for the Wrestling Hall of Fame Classic, and this one is Dick the Bruiser versus the big cat, Ernie Ladd, from the International Amphitheater, July the 28th, 1973. 1973, fans, we were really on a roll in Chicago. On, all told, that year, 19 shows. 19 shows at the amphitheater. Some of the biggest grosses, the biggest grosses in amphitheater history and the history of Chicago wrestling. Probably one of the greatest years Chicago wrestling ever had. And Big Cat Ernie Ladd was in town. This is the first of three matchups he had with Dick the Bruiser at the International Amphitheater. This was July 28th, as I mentioned. And next week, we're going to be coming back, we believe, uh, with the matches when he went against Ladd in September of 73, if not next week, the following week. Now we have the referee in there stopping things, and they're making an announcement. Dick the Bruiser's getting his hand raised. Ernie the Cat Lad is down. They're putting Bruiser in the corner. This is the last seven minutes of this particular matchup with Ernie Ladd and Dick the Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser standing off in the corner. The fans giving the signal. Now, here we got the action. There's Big Ernie the Cat Ladd coming into Bruiser with that weapon, that stick that he used to use, if you remember the Big Cat. A little dark there, but fans will trying to get it here. Uh, Light it up. There it is. Big Cat Ernie Ladd. Let me tell you. Big Cat Ernie Ladd, 315 pounds, 6 foot 9. Hey, his mother was 6 foot. She weighed 245. His dad was 6 foot 6 and weighed 265. Hey, let me tell you. He was an all-state selection in high school, basketball, football, everything. He went to Grambling. He was an idol. His idol was uh, Tank Younger, who used to be the L.A. Rams fullback. Was in the All-Star Game in Chicago, fourth round draft choice of the Chicago Bears, 16th for San Diego. Was the AFL All-League starting tackle his freshman year with the All-Star team. He started wrestling, professional wrestling in 1953. He started in the professional ranks, 1963, I'm sorry. 1963 in Los Angeles. He played with the world champion Kansas City Chiefs. And when he came into Chicago this night to go against Dick the Bruiser, let me tell you, Dick the Bruiser had all the credits going for him. 6'1", 265, one of the great all-time players from Green Bay Packers, one of their greats. And, of course, this was a natural matchup. Dick the Bruiser, formerly with the Green Bay Packers against Ernie Ladd, the AFL All-Pro Tackle. And look at the difference in the size of these two men. Bruiser, 6'1", Ladd, 6'9". Bruiser, 260, Ladd, 300, probably 370. Look at the legs on that Ladd. Man. They're at the post, and they're off. It's a fast field of one owner, four-year-olds from Ben's. 
Come on, Ben! At the half pole, all of Ben's beauties are looking good and are running smooth. Come, Come on, on, Ben! Now they're in the stretch. It's El Dorado, Holmes and Buick, Nick and Nick, with Chevy Caprice Classic closing on the rail. Come on, Caprice Classic! Not to finish, it's too close to call. They're all winners at Ben's! And here we are in Chicago. July 28th, 1973. This was Ernie Ladd and Dick the Bruiser in a great classic matchup. Sellout house at the International Amphitheater see this one. And for good reason. Dick the Bruiser and Ernie Ladd had three big matches in 1973. This was the first of the three. The second one on September 8th and then September 29th when we had the all-time record turnout up until that point for a gross gate in Chicago. And that was when Valiant teamed with Ernie Ladd against Bruiser and San Martino. We'll be showing that to you in a couple of weeks. But for now, let's watch Dick the Bruiser in action first. Now, look at Bruiser. Let me tell you, tenacious, rough, tough guy, one of the toughest, roughest wrestlers in the history of professional sport, especially one of the greatest of all the great professional wrestlers. I can't think of one that could compete with him. And this was in 1973, fans. He had all the steam up then, baby. And you can see him going to work on Big Ernie Ladd, the big cat, Ernie Ladd. Six foot nine, fans, six nine. Dick the Bruiser in there, pushing six foot probably. And you look at, now he's giving Ernie Ladd some. Look at that lad, he's, uh, he's, he's wobbly. Ready to go down, Dick the Bruiser in there. Oh, Ladd gives, comes in with a powerhouse. Yo, hey. If he had Muhammad Ali's power there, he would have powered that punch in. But, you know, Ali, there's only one, Muhammad Ali. Dick the Bruiser powers in that right hand, a patented right hand. Something he's always, oh, over the top rope, back outside the ring into the first row. Whoa, boy, the photographer almost got that one. Whoa, Dick the Bruiser powered him right outside the ring. I've never seen such tremendous strength, such power. Dick the... Oh, he knocks him back into the ring. Tremendous. Let me tell you that Dick the Bruiser, here he is in all his fury. Dick the Bruiser in 1973 at the International Amphitheater in Chicago. A sellout crowd on hand. Look at that ringside, fans. I mean, all packed in there like... Sorry. Down goes Led. Led's down again. Let me tell you, fans, hey, Dick the Bruiser's raising his left hand, the former All-Pro Green Bay Packer lineman, and he just knocked down the AFL's most valuable lineman, Big Ernie the Cat Lad. This is it, brother, going nose on nose. Hey, no holes barred. Look at the fans moving in. The Andy Frayne down by the ringside. Security people, everybody's up. There comes the ring announcer, the doctor's down there. I see the doctor in the corner. Referee Mike Figueroa is getting out of the ring. Ernie Ladd is leaving the ringside. There you see him in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. He's under the guard of the security people. Dick the Bruiser has banged out a win here. And, uh, well, wait a minute. I don't think, I think it's a... I think it's probably a disqualification. Yes, it is a disqualification. So Dick the Bruiser did not that win that one. But they'll be back to do it again, to fight again, to wrestle again on September 8th. And then again on September 29th. And you're going to see it right here on the Wrestling Classics in a couple of weeks. You're going to see the final two confrontations in 1973. The Wrestling Hall of Fame Classic for today. Dick the Bruiser versus Ernie Ladd. And now, a message for the women from the men of Benz. Ladies, we won't sell you anything that isn't dependable. Girls, when the price is right and the car is right, chances are you're right at Benz Auto Sales. Now I ask you, how can a woman go wrong at Benz? Come out this week. Come, come, come out to Benz and be ladies and gentlemen here we are at the international amphitheater september the 8th 1973 fans this is going to be a great one this is the wrestling hall of fame classic for this week in the corner you see pretty boy bobby heenan he's going to figure in this there you see henry van loon henry van loon has the handcuffs there you see the announcer 
And there you see Heenan attacking. I, I re, I re, <laughs> hey, oh, hey, I, now I got it. It's Sam Menneker. Hey, for a minute there I was, hey, after all, fans, we're watching this together. This is 12 years ago, fans, 12 years. That's Sam Menneker. Sam Menneker still powering in them punches. And we have Sam Menneker, and Bobby Heenan has been cut. Bobby Heenan has been cut early here on. He, oh, they're dragging him to the corner, fans. We haven't even got this one started, and Heenan's out cold. Sam Menneker, boy, I, that happened so fast, I hardly caught. Why were they taking Heenan away? Look at this, fans. They're taking him away. Well, this is really something. And now we have, this is the second one of the trio confrontations, the trio matchups at the amphitheater between Ladd and Bruiser. 1973, this was the red hot match in Chicago. This was the biggie. And we have another sellout at the amphitheater, 1973. Hey, wrestling was on a roll in 1973. 19 matches we had at the International Amphitheater, believe it or not. Everyone, almost a sellout. We had 11 sellouts. Uh, five near sellouts. There's Bruiser going after Ernie Ladd in the corner. Oh, again, he punches Ladd, and Ladd went outside, almost went over on his head. Ladd, six foot nine fans, 325 pounds of rock'em, sock'em dynamite. This is a tough one, Dick the Bruiser. Look at him, strong as an ox, Dick the Bruiser. One of the great kingpins of professional wrestling in Chicago. In 1973, Dick the Bruiser, when he was at the amphitheater, it sold out. Absolutely, positively. No questions asked, baby. Hey, there comes Bruiser. Powers in that knee in the lad's midsection, and Lad goes down right on his back. Bruiser's on top of him there. Referee moves in for the count. Lad kicks out. Whoa, boy, almost had him. And a powers in another punch. Right above the left eye, another punch. Got Lad right above the left eye, another punch. A bruiser, and Bruiser bangs another one to the head and another one to the head. Bruiser's picking up off, of, of course, Muhammad Ali was to come three years later, 1976. Wait, and oh, there goes Ladd again. Dave fans, the power, Dick the Bruiser's got the power and the security people moving in at the ringside. Look at them, fans. We've got 10 security people right there in sight. Hey, them biggies at the amphitheater, we had a lot of security. Let me tell you. Look at them fans packed in at the ringside. You see yourself in there, fans? Any of you fans? This is 1973 at the International Amphitheater. All right. Now Bruiser's working over Ladd. Ladd is outside the ropes where he spent most of the time in this match. Uh, if you caught the early on uh, segment, you saw that Heenan was carried from the ring. Not cold by Sam Menneker, slamming Sam, slammed Heenan, knocked him cold, carried him to the dressing room. So long, Bobby. And now Bruce is in one-on-one -on -one against Big Ernie the Cat Lad. Big Ernie the Cat Lad, a legend, a legend. In the AFL, of course, one of the highest paid players in the history of the AFL. Remember the AFL fans? Oh, wait a minute. Doctor's up in the corner there. The doctor wants to look at his face. The doctor, the commission doctor says, Hold it. But Bruiser wants more of the action here. Bruiser says, come on, give me him. This is, hey, this is NFL, rock'em, sock'em style. They're both outside the ring now. Bruiser powers, and there Lad comes in with that weapon of his, that stick, that long stick that he carried in his trunks in 1973. Almost every match he brought it out and would slam a wrestler in the throat with a jabbing right up in the throat. Hey, Bruiser took it, and now Bruiser's jamming back. Lad comes in with a punch. Let me tell you, fans, they're really powering him in, too. These two boys, no love lost. Hey, Bruiser taking it, taking it like a man. Look at that. Bruiser can, hey, pound on. Oh, Bruiser, let him have one. Lad, bloody, real bloody. The referee's outside the ring. Believe it or not, fans, the referee had to jump outside the ring, and that's the end of it. That's the end of the one that you wanted to see. 1973, International Amphitheater, September the 8th, the Hall of Fame Classic. Lad's in trying to get his hand raised, but it's another disqualification. And they're going to be back for the third matchup. And we're going to have that one for you just after we get through with a message, and then we'll be back.
Terrific action, fans. Great action. Look at this. Whoa, terrific action. Dick the Bruiser's all upset. He's counting Bruiser. He's telling Bruiser, you got to go to the dressing room. Get to the dressing room. Hey, pal, you got to go to the dressing room. Lad's standing up there. It's disqualification. Bruiser's upset. He's got a cut over his eye. He wants more of Lad. Lad's ready for him. 1970. Look at Lad. Gave him that thumb in the throat again. The taped up thumb that Lad has and uses as a weapon. Whoa, Bruiser is really upset. He's marching around the ring now. There's the security people. The Frayne, 1973. What action, fans. A sellout at the amphitheater. A Hall of Fame classic, if ever there was one. Dick the Bruiser back up on the apron. They cannot restore order in this match. They cannot get the wrestlers to leave. The wrestlers keep at it. Now Lad's coming after him again. Bruiser's back in the ring. The match is over, Lad. Hey, he took that one, and he lands upside down. He's trying to get his equilibrium. He's out of it. He's out of it. Lad is having trouble standing up on them pins, baby. Dick the Bruiser now. There's his favorite spot after the match. He likes to get out there, wave to the crowd, tell them, look at the fans back there, fans. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I tell you. Brings back memories, fans, the great action at the International Amphitheater. There he is, the powerhouse, Dick the Bruiser, world's most dangerous wrestler. Finally going to leave the ring. Hey, hey, he doesn't want to leave, but he says, I'll be back, I'll be back. I'm going to get this guy one of these days, really get him. Well, Bruiser, there are the guards moving in. Everybody wants to pat him on the back. Dick the Bruiser, the world's most dangerous wrestler. Then and today, one of the greatest attractions in the history of professional wrestling. There he's being led back to the dressing room. Look at them fans moving in. Want to get a piece of the Bruiser. Eliminate red tape financing. What is red tape financing, you ask? Just go to a cold-blooded bank and you'll find out. With Credit Man on the job at Ben's, you cut through red tape. Ah! And what's even better, you can buy now and pay later at Ben's. How much later? Come to Ben's and find out. You roll on fresh wheels with your payments to fit your budget. Ben's Auto Sales is the home of the Yes Man, and here comes one now. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Ben says yes to any reasonable offer. Yes. Yes. This is Credit Man. He's Ben's yes man for credit. Yes. 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 Next time, go to Ben's Auto where you get it all. The best cars. The quickest financing. Even insurance at your one-stop car shop. Ray! Ray! Hey! <laughs> Well, let me say a little class is going to return to Bob Luce Wrestling in Chicago because that's what professional wrestling's all about, class. Let me tell you, I got a great film to show you right now, August 16th at the International Amphitheater, when Handsome Johnny and Luscious John met Billy Robinson and Wilbur Snyder. Snyder and Robinson, of course, members of the Hall of Fame, and the Valiant Brothers, rough and tough, right out of New York City where they've had 12 consecutive sellouts at the Madison Square Garden. Let me tell you, they are really tough and they should be uh, right up on top as far as challengers for the world tag team title go. But this night, August 16th, let me tell you, they had a tough time with Robinson and Snyder. And finally the match was declared a draw. We're gonna show you some real action in this one. And uh, let me tell you, I'm gonna play this record special before we get into the Al Lerner and he'll be talking to uh, the monster and also handsome Johnny Starr. But let's get down tonight. That's what we're going to call it. Get down tonight because that's what it's all about at the amphitheater. When they get out there, they get right into it. Let's go. Get down. 
fans. Here we are, Al Lerner with handsome Johnny Starr and Monster O'Connor. First time I've had a chance to talk to Monster O'Connor. We're watching action. The Valiant Brothers are against Wilbur Snyder and Billy Robinson. Hey, can I say something, Al? You know, this Snyder's not a bad wrestler. He's a pretty fair country wrestler, but let me say something. You saw on this television show last week, and how that ever escaped out of the control room, I'll never know, but you saw the monster smash. You know, we heard that song, Monster Mash, that that idiot Loose was playing. Well, it is appropriate in one way, because we saw the monster smash Wilbur Snyder right here, right in the middle of the ring on Channel 44, and that's about the most beautiful thing I've seen in ages, Al Lerner. Monster O'Connor, is Wilbur Snyder the toughest man you've ever wrestled? Monster, monster don't want to answer. You don't want to answer you, Al, and I don't blame him because, you know, he the monster... He doesn't want to answer. That's exactly what I said, Al. The monster's a great man. He doesn't have to sit and talk to people like you. He's going to be the next, uh, probably the next greatest wrestler of all time. You know, I, I, since I signed on with him, the monster has really come up. He's gotten sadistic. He's gotten brutal. Only one man has walked away from a match with him in the last year. Who was that? Time. That just happened to be Wilbur Snyder because I told the monster. Say that I again. Said, Who was that walk. man that walked away yeah, from Wilbur And I it told was Wilbur Snyder. You heard what I said, Lerner. And I told monster. I said, don't kill him. Leave a little. Leave a little for the for the other people. You know, the monster and Ox are great friends, and that's one reason he doesn't like you, Al. Monster, where did you meet Ox? Hey, the monster's not talking to you. You might as well forget it. He didn't have anything you know, to I say to you. I don't think this is a pretty big guy. I don't think he needs a mouthpiece like you. Well, monster, where did you meet Ox? Let me tell you something. Thank you. He talks. Johnny Starr right. is working for me. He does my talking. That's right. Does he do your thinking, you know, too? Hey, that's an insult, Al Learn. I don't I'm appreciate that in. kind I'm of not remark. Trying to insult I want to tell you something. I don't work for Bob Luce. You know what? I work for the Ox. I work for Monster. I make 10% of everything they make. Bob Luce doesn't sign my paycheck. Ben's Autos joins the women's liberation to easy riding, easy handling mid-sized cars. Give me some girls who will start hearted girls and I'll soon show them goodbyes at Ben's. Join Ben's lib movement to put the gals in the right car. Just give me ten that will follow me to Ben and I'll soon give you ten thousand more. Go to Ben's now, gals, and see Credit Man for your financing. He's the one man I dig. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Over the last 15 years of doing over 800 telecasts on wrestling, there's some very exciting and humorous, maybe even humorous, things have happened right here on the set. And I want to share them with you right now, some of those humorous moments, some of those once-in-a-lifetime moments right here out of 800 telecasts. Let's watch. We aren't going to do the interviews yet, Bobby Heenan. But we'll have it. We're going to do the interviews after this show. I know. Your Al Lerner will do them sure in another studio. I Don't make sure he's got everything straight. He's got everything now, straight. Now, wait a like minute. Like I said, if you beat me in Nutra, any form, any way, any shape, I won't come out for the main event. That's exactly what I have in mind, Bobby. Well, I you're not sure. real bright. You don't so think I so? I thought I'd come out you and make sure. You don't think so? Well, I know not. Let me tell you something about hey, you, come Bobby. On. No, wait, no, wait. He's hogged the whole Okay, show. listen, fans, then He's hogged the whole we'll show. have a special... Why don't you get out of here? We'll have the... Show. Show. No, get out! No! Get out! Oh, please, not... No! That just goes to show you what kind of a gentleman lead belly here is. Hey, get the hell out of here! Get the hell out of here! Get out of here! What kind of a gentleman lead belly is! You know, we're going to have a couple of tremendous wrestling cards right after Christmas, so it's an added plus for all the wrestling fans around Chicago and in Hammond. On the 27th, there's going to be, well, a great card at the International Amphitheater. And on the 28th at Hammond, another great card. And seated right alongside of me here is John Case, who sort of works with Bob Lewis with the Chicago Wrestling Program, and he's done it for years. And these two cards, John, should really be something. Oh, Bob Lewis puts on great cards all the time, Bob. And these cards are going to be outstanding. They're going to be great Christmas shows. Well, they when are you going to talk to me, Bob? That's the reason I'm sitting here, to talk to you, you know. Excuse me, Ox. I'm going to get to you right away because your match with Moose Sholak has got to be one of the big features of that contest. You're trying to ruin my career. 
Oh, yeah, you see? See what Bob. you're doing right now? No. People all over the country are seeing you, you know. You're not out here by yourself. Bob, uh, the reason I'm here, I'm representing the management of the Chicago Wrestling Club, as I often do. And uh, I want to, uh, Bob, hey, extract himself from the uh, I know these interview. Two stand behind him, a and, karate uh, expert. Tommy and Cappy, you're friends of the Chicago of Wrestling Club. Hey, they can't fool me. I've seen Tommy, these guys at the gym. Tommy and Cappy, you see what we're up against? You can't reason with the odds. Reason? Must and you're trying to ruin my career? Crazy. Laughing and snickering on this TV? No, I don't think Everybody that. Everybody in this arena was ruined on the floor. They thought it was a big joke. Ox Bigger's just a clown. He should have paint. And it's all your fault. See, you think everything's a big... See, this is your bodyguard, isn't it? I know why he's here. You think you need but You're afraid to walk down the streets at night, right? You think I'm going to be standing there trying to get even with you. Well, I want to tell you something, Bob. Let me tell you something, too. You're going to wrestle a real good old-time friend of mine on the card on the 27th. Yukon hey, Yukon Moose Chicago and Yukon talking Yukon, about you Yukon Moose Yukon Moose the fabulous ox baker yeah now, what makes you think that you can John looks like John may be hurt here here boys help him up here come on let's get him up on his feet brother he's got a come on Al huh he got a real, he got a real hard body blow there. <coughs> Somebody get a glass of water for him. Huh? Right, right outside here. Yeah. Come on, John, just take it easy. What happened there, Bob? I don't know. Uh, he, he and the ox got into some kind of a, uh, kind of an argument, and he belted him. And it looked like he knocked the, knocked the wind out of him. Okay, we'll be back. We'll be back right after this. Hey, Pally, you need a car? Yeah. Need credit, too? Yeah. We give you both. Who's we? Credit man, the guy in the red cape and mask. What you smoking? I mean credit man at Ben's Auto Sales. The guys that bend over backwards by the corner of 59th and Western? Chicago's number one used car dealer. Where you buy now with no payments until March, Pally. I drive until March with within, no payments? With insurance, too. Let's get it on, big boy. Right now.